1959, during the Great Chinese Famine, Longping Yuan was just beginning his agricultural career. He saw people eating anything they could find and decided he could end hunger by increasing rice production. Knowing that hybrid plants are often more robust, Yuan decided that hybrid rice was the solution. But since each rice flower pollinates itself, breeders couldn't mass produce hybrid seed. They would have to remove the pollen producing anthers from countless flowers and pollinate them by hand. Yuan was undeterred. Failure is the mother of success. <laughs> In 1964, he devised a three line system to produce hybrid seed using a variety with male sterile flowers. Over the next few years, his team found wild plants that didn't make pollen and started working to mass produce hybrids. And it succeeded in 1973. Nine years hard work. Uh. Yuan's hybrids with vigorous roots and large flower clusters produced 20 to 30 percent more rice than conventional varieties, and his research into hybrid rice never stopped. I don't feel proud. I just uh, have done some works on, on developing of hybrid rice. Uh, and uh, my colleagues, they have done a lot of work to assist uh, me. But I feel it is uh, uh, important work I have done. That important work has fed millions of people and turned famine into just a memory. Rice specialist Chi Fa Chong often jokes about how priorities have changed since he became an agricultural scientist 30 years ago. We have three goals, <laughs> as I'm joking. Number one is yield, number two is to increase yield, number three is to improve the yield. Now we worked very hard to improve quality. The key to improving rice yield was to develop especially vigorous hybrid plants. Chong has spent his career teasing apart the genetics of hybrid rice to figure out how to make even better varieties. Hybrids, like mules, are vigorous combinations that do better than either parent, but the reasons for their success are unclear. Chong used a cleverly designed rice population to uncover the genetic mechanisms behind their hybrid vigor. His lab also identified the genes for male sterility, an essential trait in hybrid rice breeding. Although hybrids between Xian and Gong rice are exceptionally vigorous, they don't produce rice because they're infertile. Chung and his team recently worked out the genetic mechanism known as the killer protector system, responsible for the hybrid's infertility. I just feel like this is just a detective story, very interesting. I feel quite proud of it. <laughs> Chung's discoveries could make rice plants yield more grains with more taste and more nutrition. What we describe as a green super rice is less pesticide, less fertilizers, more production and better yield. That is our goal for second green revolution. Rice is a critical food for our ever-growing population. We need to find ways to produce more without using more land or creating more pollution. Jai Yong Li is combining genetic research and careful breeding to deliver rice that can meet this challenge. Li recalls seeing older rice varieties collapse under the grain's weight before the Green Revolution brought dwarf plants. This inspired him to search for other ways to improve the plant's structure. His lab discovered a gene controlling plant shape, IPA1, and found a version that produces an optimum structure with higher yield. We think IPL1 has the potential for a new revolution in rice. They also identified genes for other important traits, like stalk number and starch biosynthesis. Knowing what genes influence what traits, they can design varieties at the molecular level. Molecular design, that means um, before you make something, you already know which one you choose and mix them together and you get the result you want. 
With this approach, Li gave high-yield varieties the nutritious, high-quality grains of low-yield varieties, more quickly than traditional breeding would have done. We have a new strategy that can be effectively used for breeders to create the new varieties to solve a difficult, uh, complex uh, problems. And we feel really happy. Li plans to design smart varieties combining high yield and quality with disease resistance, stress tolerance and reduced resource use. The 2018 Future Science Prize in Life Science was awarded to Jai Yong Li, Long Ping Yuan and Qi Fa Chong for pioneering contributions in producing high yield, superior quality rice through systematic study of molecular mechanisms associated with specific rice features and application of novel approaches in rice breeding.